In 2014, a group of scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for the invention of the blue LED. This has led to more efficient light bulbs around the house and a more accurate representation of colors on TV displays. However, there are concerns regarding the amount of artificial blue light that our eyes are being exposed to, especially nowadays with our lives being so ingrained into this digital culture. But before we talk about that, let's take a moment to decipher what blue light actually is. As I've mentioned in a countless number of my videos, our eyes are designed to pick up on the presence of radiation. More correctly, the presence of electromagnetic radiation. Out of all the different electromagnetic radiation types out there, our eyes can only detect the visible part of the spectrum and hence the name the visible range. The shortest wavelength a human can humanly detect is up to about 380 nanometers and the longest being at 700 nanometers. Smaller than 380 and you'd be entering the ultraviolet zone. This is what causes your skin to burn and what allows magnifying glasses to kill ants. For humans, we can't see ultraviolet light, mainly because our crystalline lens absorbs ultraviolet, but at the same time, we don't want to see this stuff. If we did, then our retina would be at risk of being sunburnt. Blue light, however, does get through, and it's an essential part of what allows us to see color as we know it. Blue wavelengths of light exist everywhere in nature, especially during broad daylight between golden hour at sunrise and the other golden hour during sunset. If you pay close attention to how the lighting changes during the day, it goes from pitch black, to golden hour, to broad daylight, back to golden hour, and then back to pitch black. Rinse and repeat for eternity. When the sun is high up in the sky, we see white light. And when the sun is closer to the horizon, we get an orangey hue. This is because the light from the sun needs to travel through more opacities in the atmosphere to reach our eyes during sunset. And longer wavelengths like red and orange just so happen to be really good at that. For the same reason why the sky is orange when someone decides to do a gender reveal nearby and lets the entire world know by putting up smoke in the atmosphere. Visual cues such as sunrise and sunset have governed our sleeping patterns for as long as we've been around, and it's what allows us to form our daily circadian rhythm. In the morning at 7am, my body just wakes me up. And at 1pm just before lunchtime, I get incredibly hungry. Broad daylight is a trigger for alertness, followed by sunset and darkness, which signal for sleep. A paper published in 2003 showed that when people were presented with blue light, it created a significantly greater phase delay in melatonin secretion as opposed to, let's say, the color green. So we know that the color blue, more than any other color, has a greater impact in sleep regulation. But is this really a big deal? Should we be concerned by it at all? We know that in very extreme cases, a lot of blue can cause the same effects as caffeine where it just won't let you sleep. I can't sleep. But the amount of light that your screens give off, will it stop you from getting good sleep? Obviously, that would depend on the amount of time you're spending on these screens and the intensity of your screen display. And because everyone's work setup is different, I can't tell you whether you're at risk of sleep deprivation. But what I can tell you are some tips that you can implement in your daily routine just so that you're not getting copious amounts of blue light. Firstly, I think it's really important that you establish a good sleep routine. I get up at 7am and go to bed at 10pm with no exceptions. So from the hours of 10pm to 2am, which is when most people like to go on their devices, my eyes don't have to deal with bright lights and colours. Secondly, I set up an automatic night mode on my iPhone so that after 7pm my screen turns to a warmer colour so it doesn't look as harsh, and at 10pm I don't get any notifications. Lastly, I want to talk about blue light filters, because this is a question that I get asked way too many times. Most blue light glasses work off of the same principle as the anti-reflection coating, which I also made a video on previously, so if you want to watch that, then feel free to do that in your own time. But for blue light filters, it's carefully engineered so that the reflections of every single color are cancelled out, except blue. And that is why you see a blue reflection when you see glasses with blue light filters. The amount of blue being reflected off is equivalent to 8-10% to in a standard 1.5 refractive index lens. 
In other words, through blue blocking glasses, instead of getting 100% of blue light, you're getting close to about 90 to 92%. To be completely honest with you, I don't have an opinion on whether blue light glasses work. Mainly because if you look at the published literature on one extreme where subjects were exposed to a lot of blue, their sleep patterns were impacted significantly. But on the other hand, where they compared subjects with both blue light glasses and non-blue light glasses, it showed no significant difference in the way they felt. So I think at this point, there's just not enough evidence for me to say, wow, these blue light glasses will 100% work, it'll change your life forever, and I can't imagine living without them. Instead, it's more like we know that blue light affects sleep, and if you're somebody who has trouble sleeping from using too much screens at nighttime, and you want to do something about it, I would firstly establish a good sleep routine first, and then supplement it with possibly blue light glasses. That's how I would approach it. For me personally, I've had blue light filters added onto my glasses for a number of years now. And from my experience, I really like them. It makes everything on my screen seem less harsh. And if you're somebody who enjoys night mode displays on your phones, then I'm sure you'll agree with me too. It also provides me with reassurance that for the time I'm spending on my devices, I'm getting the least amount of blue possible. And if it turns out with newer research that blue light filters are great for sleep regulation, then at least I know I'm doing the right thing. So the way I look at it is, are you team optimist or are you team skeptic? From what we know about blue light filters, do you think that that 10% reduction will have an impact on your sleep? If yes, then blue light glasses will probably work for you. And if not, then it probably won't. And also, have you had any personal experience with blue light filters and how did you feel about them? This is a question that I genuinely am curious about. So if you have five seconds, then feel free to comment down in the section below. The topic of blue light is a fascinating one and I could probably make about three or four videos just on this topic, but I think that's enough for me today. If you learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.